Laravel allows you to create your own Blade directives. So by default, Laravel has already some directives that you might be aware of. Let me just show to you. So if you go to resources, use welcome on this default Laravel project, you'll see that there is some directives already being created here, so used here. So for instance, this if directive, this auth, else, and auth uh, are default directives that come out of the box from Laravel. You can verify all of these and read all of them in the Laravel documentation. So what we're going to do here today is, what if we want to create our own Blade directive? Uh, it's very useful for you to create Blade directives because you can actually structure better your Blade templates by using them and you can abstract some of the code that normally will be written, will be right on, on your Blade directive to a specific uh, class that you ha can have or a specific uh, instantiation on the service provided directly. So the second case is what we are going to see here. So that is, for instance, we are going to transform this Laravel into something a bit more dynamic. So I want to create like, uh, I can call it like, for instance, I want to write an italic text here. So I'm going to create the blade directive italic text. And then I want to pass a value here that we will uh, write down or I can just write like hi there. And then I want to see this text written on the screen in italic. So to create this, it's very simple. First of all, we need to um, define this blade directive on our service provider to then use it on your blade templates. To do that, I'm going to just to use here the default Laravel project. So I'm going here to the app and then providers, app service provider. And I'm going to create here on the boot the blade directive. So by default, you create your blade directives on the boot of the service provider. You can all have your custom service provider or use just this one that comes out of the box with the Laravel framework. So how do you create your Laravel dar custom directive? So you, you call the method, sorry, the method directive. And, and you pass here the directive, the first parameter is actually the, um, the name of the directive that you want to call it on your blade template. So in this case, italic text. And the second is the, the closure function. So in this case, function. And on our case, we are passing an argument. So we put it here like string. And then we write down what we want to be parsed by the by the uh, blade compiler. So in this case, whatever you write here on your return is going to be exactly uh, compiled on the on your PHP. So what does this mean? It means that you really need to use like a PHP directive here, and whatever you write here, I'm just going to hard code something so you can see. Our, uh, in this case, we can just write like for instance uh, example. So you can see what does this mean. So Laravel will interpret this part here uh, on this return and will actually parse exactly what you write here. So I'm not using still the string so you can see what does this mean. So I'm going to put this italic text. Uh, I'm even going to remove everything. So we start by a simple example. So I'm going to take everything out. And don't forget that each time you create um, a new temp, a new blade directive, or you update your blade directive, you always need to clear the cache of the views. Uh, oh, sorry, in this case, giving an error because I didn't add the namespace blade, so I add it here on the top right now. So if you do an F5, it shows example. See, so this example that is written here is the example that uh, I just art coded. So as you can see, I, I removed a, uh, the last dot here. And you see nothing happen. Why? Because Laravel doesn't update the directive immediately. You need to clear the cache. And then when you do an F5, the directive is updated. It's just a part of the directive. It's not the part of what you pass on the argument of your directive when you use it on the blade template, okay? So now let's create a bit more code here. So I want to put like, hi there. On this. So I'm going to use this single codes, hi there. So again, whatever everything that you pass here is going to be passed on your argument. So don't forget that uh, by having this string, you might be tempted to use something like this, right? Because you, you think, okay, the string is actually is high there, but no, 
you are passing also the single quotes. So this is going to generate an error because it will have two single quotes on the screen. So here we go. So as you can see here, single quote, single quote, because one single quote comes from here, the other single quote comes from here. So in this case, for instance, you might pass like this. Again, it's just a static example, so you can see, and it shows the high there. Of course, you're not going to do this directly. You're going to use a val you're going to use a variable, right? So you can put like value and then have just for the sake of this example, you can have um, a quick directive here of PHP, and then you can write value equals to I Bruno, that's my name. And in this case, you see a value here because I just need to uh, high value uh, in this case. Uh, just give me a yeah, exactly. So it's parsing again this value that you have here into those single quotes that you have there. There's a string, it detects it's a string and it writes it down here on this variable. So again, uh, these kind of, of, of situations are very common for you to use. And actually you are also, most of the cases you might have something like, uh, um, uh, let's say a, a conditional tool where you write code and then you want to close it down again. So for instance, let's say that I want to put like bold and then have a end bold, for instance. So everything that I write here should be like written like a bold, like I, I can put like, this is my text in bold. And you don't want to pass it as a parameter. You, this is mo most of the cases you, you work like this. So you need to create the one a function for the bold where actually you just start like strong and you need to create another one that will close down that one, the end bold where you pass it down like this, see? So you will have one that starts and another one that ends. And in the middle, Laravel processes everything that is here. So let's do a, this is my text in bold. Actually, it doesn't show anything because the CSS uh, is kind of, um, doesn't show that one because it's it's not, uh, well, it's not visible on this HTML CSS. Uh, but as you can see here on the, on the view source, you see that it placed a strong and then the slash strong that is the end on the end bolt. See, you can you can actually uh, use this type of, of logic to start and end your code, you see. So as you can see, you already saw with an argument, we already saw without arguments and Laravel also has something that is very nice that is the if directive. And the if directive works on, the, on this way. So let's put it here, blade, uh, and then we call it if, uh, and then here I will pass uh, something that I want to validate and you see what does this mean. So I'm going to, to just write uh, is number, then, then we see what does this mean. So I put function and then number, whatever, I just can put num, so you see it can be different it doesn't matter what is the name that you give on the on the directive itself and here we will put uh, the the conditional that we want to validate so in this case if is numeric num then you just say return true so, or, or, or in this case, you can just do, of course, just like a return is numeric num. So what, what does this do? This will do something very nice that I'm going to show to you right now. Uh, and I, here I write is number and I'm going to pass the number one and I'm going to write here and is number. So you can see it working and here, uh, text was written 
because argument was numeric. Oops, sorry. Was numeric. Again, I'm going to clean down the cache and I'm going to do an F5 and text was written because argument was numeric. So Laravel uh, on the 5.5 ver version, if I'm not mistaken, uh, created this static method called if. So this is a very quick way for you to create directives where you can pass an argument and that argument that you pass here or several arguments as meta, they will be evaluated inside your your closure and of course if this closure returns true then the code that is executed here the code that you have written here will be rendered on the screen and this is very powerful you can use uh, these for any type of of like you know environments verifications or uh, for instance what kind of route are you working on uh, for instance you can write imagine that you want to write to write these uh, if you are on a specific action or if you are in a specific uh, route uh, and, and, and whatever you want to do. So, you, I mean, you can, you can use this if, uh, if method to specify the name of your directive and then the code that will be evaluated given the arguments that you pass here. So, for instance, if in this case, if I pass Bruno, it doesn't show anything. See? So again, it's an evaluation that happens here. So of course, if I say return is not numeric, it's going to show it, of course, logically, because it returns true, but I think you got the logic of it. So to catch up again, to wrap up here, we have a way to create a blade directive as we just saw with the italic text example. You can have this uh, blade if that will allow you to create how many directives you want given the fact that the code that you execute here, if it evaluates to true, then the text that you put, the content that you put inside your blade directive, it will be rendered on the screen. Don't You see, uh, this part of end this number is automatically created by the Laravel framework as soon as you use this if. So is number you can call like, I don't know, whatever, whatever. And if you put here whatever, then you need to also put here, you cannot put end this number. So let me just show to you that it will generate an error because it will not end correctly because it doesn't understand this is number. So actually you need to also close it down with end and then you put the name of your directive here. Um, and again, actually it was not needed, but you understand what I mean. See, it didn't give an error. And that's it, it completes the lesson for today. I hope you now understand how to create your blade directive. So um, have fun with it. Thank you very much.